Lord calls you a whore. Now, you know, we just got to face facts, right? So let me just get that out of the way right now, right? It's in the Word of God. So if it's in the Word of God, that means we can talk about it, right? Amen. So when the Lord calls you a whore. Now, you know, sometimes in society, you know, on this street that I live in, this, this neighborhood that I live in, there are some whores in our community. You might see them down this street here that you can't see it on TV, but it's down the street here. You can't see it. Don't look on the TV and go down West Street. I'm telling you it's down the street, right? So, right? I know, right? I, I know, I know. Just just come along with me, right? The tiger still got you stunned when the Lord calls you a whore. <laughs> but you know, right down the street, not too far, you can't solicit a prostitute. Yeah, you sure can. And you know, it can be raining, shining. That's why I know people can do whatever they want to do. It can, what? But church folks don't come to church when they cloud up. But here I go. Raining, sleeting, snowing. It can be hailing. The building can be on fire. Those whores are going to be right out there on the street. They bowl, and they out there making money. And it's, it's, it's the lowest point that a lady can get in her life to sell her body. It's the lowest point. And this dictionary says that a whore is what? A whore is a woman who engages in promiscuous sexual intercourse. Usually it's for money. What? They're also known as a prostitute or a harlot. It says also that a whore, in another reference that I read, is oftentimes desperate. And we read in the Bible, it has a couple of uh, stories about a person who was a harlot. I'm going to read a little bit about her today. And also, it was another woman in there that was caught in adultery. And, you know, it just really amazes me when people say, and especially women, come on now, don't, don't behave as women, when we say the man got me pregnant. Come on now. Come on now. Right? Come on now. He got, come on now. Right? Come on. Come on. Just nod it. You'll, you'll feel better. Right? So we know we got to understand the word of God. We got to understand the truth of him, what the Lord is telling us to do. So we got in the Bible. Come on, come on. We got in the Bible about when the lady was called in adultery. Uh, what did Jesus do? Jesus drew on the ground, and he told her to don't do that no more, and he had forgiven her. But, you know, didn't you always wonder what he was doing on the ground? He was dilly dallying. And I just happened to believe that he was right now making some of the names to customers. Who knows? It was, on the, it was on the news not long ago. Come on, somebody. It was on the news, right? And the whore, they got them all dressed up now. They call them call girls. They call them uh, uh, escorts. But when you get down to the core of it, they're whorish. Right? That's what the that, that's what the that's what the definition said, saying they sell their body for money. They selling their body for money. And then so we read about the woman that was calling adultery. And then we read about the woman, was a woman of the street, and she came in and received salvation, I believe, and no doubt she had bought this precious oil that was in what kind of box? The alabaster box. You ain't know that, did you, right? It said she was a woman of the street, right? And that's when Judas was exposed, and we found out he had a bag right there. It, it all happened right at that scene. You, mean, you better go read it. You better read it and be free. <laughs> you hear me? Amen. Read it and be free. So we found out that she got tired of it. And who gave her the worst problem? Now here she is. Think about this usual, just think. Now this is a good time to use your imagination. Some of y'all use your imagination on wrong stuff, but this is a good time. Now just think, Jesus is in this room. This lady comes in, no doubt. She's been out all night selling her body to get this money. The Bible says when you think about the alabaster box, that oil was so expensive. It was so precious. But she thought enough. How else could she have gotten the money? She sold her body, got the money, bought the oil, brought it into Jesus. That's all she had. It's sort of like a little drummer boy. I want a bump bump. He said, all I have is my what? All I have is my drum. But he wanted to give it from his heart. He did the best thing he could do was to just play that drum. And even though she was a whore, even though she was a harlot, even though she was a call girl, even though she was a prostitute, even though she was an escort, she realized enough was enough. And you know what, neighbor? When we were just a few doors down, we have been on this corner here for 14 years, and we started down there a few doors down, right there on the corner where now sits a daycare center. 
And when we were down there, we actually had a, a prostitute who had came in, and she was so tired, no doubt she had been up all night long, and we fed her, and I sat over in the corner, and I rocked her, and tried to encourage her to come out of that lifestyle. But don't you know once she got her stomach fed, filled up, and don't you know once she got a little rest, I saw her right back out there again. I saw her right back out there again. So now remember what the dictionary says that a, a, a whore is, or a prostitute, is a woman who engages in promiscuous sexual intercourse, usually for money, prostitute even considered a harlot. Now the thing about that is, you can get your life right, you can find the Lord, you can get the blood of Jesus on your soul, you can get yourself cleaned up, maybe you uh, getting contracted an STD, maybe you went and got the shot at the little red schoolhouse, I'm not really sure um, what that's all about, but it's redemption, right? But when the Lord says you're a whore, you know, we all have a past. We all have a past. The Bible says all of us have fallen short, but he didn't tell us to stay short, did he? He told us to grow up eventually. I didn't need to inject here because people in false doctrine, they love to use that scripture that nobody can live free from sin. They always want to use the scripture that's in 1 John, talking about say, if we don't, if we say we have no sin, then we are lying. He said if I was never a sinner, I would make him a lie. The truth ain't in me. Right? That's what the scripture means. That, that scripture doesn't mean if I say that I'm not in sin, I make him up. No. The Bible, what that scripture specifically says, that if I never knew sin, but we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Right? right? So it don't matter what state you're in in your life today, for the blood of Jesus, you can be made whole, you can be made well, you can come out of degradation. Man, there's some prostitutes out there that's men. I'm just happen to be saying, it just says here a woman, but it's some whorish men out there. Amen. Uh -huh. Some of them is in the church. Come on, Can I say man. it? Come on, I said it. <laughs> some of them is in the church. They look real good, smell real good. Some of them is on the down. I ain't getting a no response in my church, but I know you said it in the, on the camera low. <laughs> Didn't you say down low? Amen. Down low. Right? When the Lord calls you a whore, I want to share a story with you that I heard this week. I think it's very fitting for our message when the Lord calls you a whore. And you know, neighbor, I want you to know, maybe for the first time in a long time, I got everybody's attention in this church. If you can see how they looking at me, woo, they just want to know, what is she going to say next? And I'm capitalizing on this experience because it don't happen that much. And so I'm a little excited in my soul, but I'm, I'm, I'm just repressing that excitement that I can bring forth this word. Right. Uh-huh. I want to share this with you, which was just told to me, I believe it was this week, so here we go. So this person was having a conversation with me. We're talking about when the Lord calls you a whore. Now, this person was having a conversation with me about a story that was told on their job, and it went something like this. So this person that I know said they was talking to somebody they know. And so somebody they know, you know, you know something they know, what they know, you know who they know when they know when they knew the person. So they was having a conversation with this person that they knew. So the young lady went on to describe she went out on a date with this gentleman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know how many people have sex on the first on the on the first date? All right, come back to my story. You know how many people have intercourse on that first date? You know how many people sleep around with somebody that they don't even know, and they sleep with all the people that that person knew on their first day, the first time they ever said ass on them. But let me go back to my story. This person was sharing with me about the experience that somebody they knew had not long ago. She went out on a date with this man. It was a woman and a man. Got to say that. <laughs> she went out on a date with this man, and I guess somehow, some kind of way, his phone got misplaced. Left there with the lady that he was dating, he was on a date with. She thought, why? Ah, why not? Apple rules. See what's on his phone. He left it here. It didn't have a passcode on it. I didn't have to do no secret scan on my finger to get it off. It was seen. He wanted me to see it. Now remember, I want you to keep this in mind when the Lord calls you a whore. She out on a date with this fellow. He somehow, he leaves his phone, he's gone. She thought, ah, let me see what kind of fault 
he be talking to on his phone. She hit that little video thing, because you know on your phone you can take videos. Right. They can take videos and you might not even know it, but anyway. She looked at the video and the man that she was out having a date with was having sexual relations with a man. So you better be careful who you call yourself hooking up with. Some of these people are so nasty. They are asleep with you. And there's so many people out that got AIDS. There's so many people got AIDS. They got more than the cold boo. But I'm talking about when the Lord calls you a whore. Now I'm bringing you into something that you know to something you don't know. Right? And so you can see all these eyeballs looking at me right now. You'd be like, Reverend Thomas. Right? So... There's some people out now, they receive AIDS, right? So now they become on get on a vindictive spout to right. give to infect other people. It's their mission That's to right, infect right. other people. Right? And I know all of us have heard stories about, you know, I remember when AIDS first came out, I used to work at the AIDS clinic here at a major hospital. And one of the stories that came out is that these two people, they was in a hotel room. And I guess the lady lingered behind, the guy got up, he left, whatever. But he wrote on the mirror, welcome to the world of AIDS. He was gone. She was left there with whatever. Right? So, even in the scenario that I just told you that I heard about a few days ago, those people can be forgiven, they can get their lives right. So I'm, I'm trying to get you to picture something that's so degrading, maybe in your life. Maybe you practice homosexuality. Maybe you practice lesbianism. Maybe you were a whore. Maybe you sold your body. But then you came to the Lord, and the Bible says that, though your sins be a scarlet, what? I can wash you white as snow. Though you came to the Lord, he said he would never remember your sins until when? If you went back on him. Right. Now, everything that you did in your past is forgiven. If you got the blood of Jesus on your soul, but if you go back into your sins, then that... It comes back into the face of God. Right? Right. So what I'm showing you is, it don't matter what you did in your life. This, that's what I'm trying to get you to see. No matter what you did in your life, all of us that's in here, you and TV land, we all came from different paths in our lives. My hair ain't all, wasn't always straight. You know, it's straight because it's straight. Right? We all didn't come in with polished clothes and white shirts and no, no, no. Some of us was just like what this definition said. We sold our body, we were sold anything. Mm -hmm. We're looking for love in all the wrong places, but we found the lover of our souls. So the Lord was able to cleanse us from the inside out, and now he's able to use our life. So we're just trying to get you to see that no matter in the state you're in, no matter how great it is, there's still hope for you. But when the Lord calls you a whore, that's what I'm saying. When the Lord says you're a whorish, right? So I'll, I want us to look at Joshua, the second chapter, and we're going to study today about a harlot, and then we're going to find out about um, a whore that's really, uh, really well known in the day and the time that we're now living in. you got to think about the mountain of God. There's nothing like the mountain of God, and you will have to be on it to make the one flight out. If you are not on that mountain, as you're watching this broadcast, you not on that mountain. To, as you're watching, we televising this on a Friday night, you better get on it. You better not wait, or you will be one of the characters from one of our home church books called Rapture. And it's just something for us to think about. It's just something for us to think about tonight. And now let us go to Joshua, the second chapter. We're going to read about a harlot. And it says in this definition that I read tonight that a harlot is another name for a whore, right? Amen. Okay, so when the Lord calls you a whore. Let's go to Joshua tonight. And we're going to do a little skipping around. Let's start in chapter 2 tonight. Joshua, the second chapter. Again, neighbor, if you just joined me, it's Reverend Beverly Denise Thomas. And this is the light that still shines. And what's that light, neighbor? You got it. It's the truth that's in God's word. And today, the subject is when the Lord calls you a whore. And right now we are in Joshua, the second chapter. We're going to read from 1 through verse number 6, when the Lord calls you a whore. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, go view the land, 
even Jericho. And they went and came into a, what, what, what's that word? Harlot is right in the word of God. Named Rahab and lodged there. Now think about this. This seems like this could be wow, but the Lord can use anybody. Anybody who's willing. He'll use anybody. Anybody who's willing. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter about your past. It don't matter how many people have rejected you. It don't matter if you've been incarcerated. It don't matter if you don't have an eighth grade education. If your heart is, if you are willing, God is willing to use you. So it says here that men of God are in a harmless house. My Lord, how can that be? But look at me. Again, verse 1. It, did you got your Bible with you? Maybe you got your Bible, you just taking my word. Don't you do, go, go get, go, go get your word. I'm going to read this verse again. Go get it. Go on, go on. You got it right there and get your pen here. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went, and they came into a harlot's house, so they in her home. Right? Unlike some church people. I have seen it in, in my own church. Maybe it ain't happening in your church. All I can do is talk about what happens here. Sometimes homeless people come in here. Sometimes people come in here and they don't smell good. And some of these people with their white shirt, they try to act like it ain't really bothering them. But they, they, it's really bothering them. But they might, the homeless person might smell on the outside, but you might smell on the inside. Come on, now. We all came from somewhere. Amen. The psalmist said we were shaped in iniquity and in sin that our mother conceived us. So we all smell dirty on the outside or the inside, eventually. And you can have on clean clothes, but if your heart ain't right, you still smell. Amen, but this is what the church is for. This is our commission, is to go out to the highways and do what? And compel people to come to Christ. Everybody ain't coming to Christ with a suit on. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not. Amen. So look, here's the Bible. It says these men of God went into a harlot's house. Now, I'm not, now I want you to keep the word of God in context. Because some men, some women, some people use the word of God. They switch it all up to do their devil. And I said they went into the harlot's house for a reason. They didn't become no patrons. They didn't become customers. When, you know, in this day and time, you got to clarify stuff. Come on, come on, evangelist, shout a word out to me. Come on, pastor, shout a word out to me. Right? You got the deacons. <laughs> said went into a harlot's house named Rahab, and they lodged. Now, what does lodge happen to me? It says in my Bible that lodge means that they lay down there. Oh, my God, Reverend Thomas. They went and made themselves comfortable. And they weren't no patrons. It says, and it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in thither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entering to thy house, for they be come to search out the country. So the king found out, the king found out that the harlot had company. The king knew she was a harlot, but he sent word to her, saying, Rahab, tell me about those men. Right? And it says, and the woman took the two men, and what did she do? She hid them and said thus, there came men unto me, but I was not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the man went, I walk not. I don't know why. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. So, God was able to use her. Let's see how this all worked out for her. Peruse over to chapter 6. How did this work out for her? She was a whore. She was a harlot. But could God use such a one of low degree? Could God use such a one that people looked upon? Could God use such a one? Could he have a harlot? God use what? Go to chapter 6. Let's start reading at verse number 17. Let's see how this all worked out for her. When God calls you a whore. When the Lord calls you a whore. It's no place you can have from him. It's no place you can go. It's nothing you can do. He's everywhere and in everything we do. You can't, have, you can't turn the light off. He's there. You can't shut the shade. He's there. You can't put a screen protect over your screen while you're watching porn. He's there. 
when the Lord calls you a whore. So let's read it, starting at chapter 6 of Joshua, verse 17. And the city, listen to it, and the city shall be a curse, even it, and all that are therein. Now they was getting ready to destroy the city to the Lord. Only who? Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that were, because she helped the people of God. But the Bible says she was a harlot. And when you look up a harlot, it says she was a whore. Man, God can help people like that. God can use people like that. It, according to his word, he did. Skip down to verse number 23. It says, and the young men that were spies, they went in. They brought out Rahab and her father. Her father got saved. Now think about this. Now you got to think about this. The way her life was in. Maybe he felt shame to her about uh, degrading herself and uh, abominations. And maybe he felt shame to herself about maybe she brought the men there. Maybe she went out at the same time. But this day, I'm sure he was glad. I'm sure this day he was glad. I'm sure this day he didn't care about who she was. But because now the father was saved because of Rahab. His life was spared because of her. Do you get it? Amen. If you can see these people's faces. It says here, and the young men that were spies, they went in, they brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brother. And I think you know mom and daddy probably talked now, Lord, we didn't raise a daughter, that's a harlot. You know the brothers and the sisters, they can see her out on the streets and listen, and they just cross the street just trying to act like they don't even know who she is. Y'all know family members do that. They just try to act like they don't. It's like some church people. They'll talk to you in the church, but in the market, they go right past you like you're invisible. Just <laughs> like some people at work, hey, hey, hey. But if they see you someplace else, they just try to act like they don't. We work together, dude. What's up? They still me. But her, but her life had been one in a degrading state. But her whole family was saved because she helped the men of God, not because she was a harlot. She yielded to an opportunity for the Lord to make her free, and her family was free because of her. Think about that. Right? Amen. It says, let's go down to verse 25, and Joshua, and Joshua saved Rahab the harlot, she was saved alive, and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelt in Israel unto this day, because she had hid the messengers with Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And you don't think that changed her life? Her life started out in such a degrading way. She was a whore. And the Lord thought so much of what she did for them. Turn over to Hebrews 11. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Now, people always want to talk about the lady being a whore. But what happened to the customers? They always want to talk about the man. Right. But she was made a madam by the man, what, wasn't she? By the customs. When the, this lady here not long ago, I don't know what she was in, in Chicago, Illinois, United States, but she was a madam. She was a high price call girl. And she said she was going to turn that book over. Right. I ain't talking about the book. I ain't talking about the books that they're going to be open if your name ain't in. I'm talking about her book. You probably think about like this. This is a thick book. This book got <laughs> this book got about 380 pages in it. And if you're right on the real small, you'll probably get a lot of names. And they said it was some well-known people in that book. That's all I'm trying to say. Is your name in the book? That's all I'm trying to ask tonight. <laughs> right? He, so see what the Lord really thought about Rahab. Hebrews 11, verse 31. It says, by faith, the harlot Rahab, now it never, ever, she never, ever lost the title of being a harlot. Never, ever. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. Now what saved her? Because she believed. When she received the, the spies with peace. See that? See that? But when the Lord, when the Lord, when the Lord calls you a whore, 
Come on, go with me. Proverbs, the fifth chapter. That's what we're talking about today. The Lord calls you a whore. And I'm going to tell you about a well-known whore going on around here. And you ain't got to worry about me calling no names. I just, I got one name, but it's kind of universal. It comes a lot of people. Right? Amen. Proverbs, the fifth chapter. Let's start reading it. It says, my son, you got it? Baby, can I talk to you? It's real quiet in here. May I, may, I, may I speak to you? Can you? Can you watch with me? That's why I'm on this broadcast. It says here in Proverbs, the fifth chapter, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear unto my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Well, I want you to know some men is like that, too. Mm -hmm. Can I say that? They come in looking soft, sweet skin, so soft, they use more foundation on their face, but here we go. <laughs> For the lips of a strange woman or a strange man, got to say that, drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as warm wool, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou cannot know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh to the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. That strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy laborers be in the house of a stranger, and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. So what he's saying here with the psalmist person saying that wrote this proverb, he said, yeah, it might start out good, it might seem good, but the end of you going to be something else. James says, let no man say when he is tempted that he is tempted of God. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when it's all, when sin is done with you, then it's death. That's what the problem, that's what he's telling you. He said, yeah, in the beginning it's good. Sin always good when you first start out. Because you think you're never going to get caught. Sin is ain't nothing but deceit. That's all sin is. Lust and lasciviousness and watching porn and having so many women and oh, orgies. And, but the end of it, what happened, what, what's going to be the end of you? When the Lord calls you a whore, what's the end of you? When God calls you a whore. When the Lord says you're a whorish, your ways are whorish. When the Lord accused you of laying out with other people and didn't want to come back and be with me. That's something to think about. A man calls you a whore, a woman calls you a whore, you can get your life together. You can go to another city where they don't even know your history. But when the Lord calls you a whore, it don't matter where you go or what you do, you still going to be a whore till you get your stuff together. Amen. He said, what, what, what kind of God do you think I am? That you can go and lay around with other people? That you can sleep with self? You can do whatever it is you want to do? Then come on and cozy up with me when your money, when your rent is due? You want to come up and lay up with me when the kids are acting up? He said, no, take your horse up back over there to your gods. Oh, go over there and lay up, lay up with your riches. Go over there and lay up with your job. Go lay up with the world. Because the world didn't treat you bad. They didn't abandon you. Your pimp didn't kick you out. Now you want to come back to me. When the Lord calls you a whore. You're going to give your best to them. And when you're all beat up, most people that's prostitutes, Many of them get beat up, get their teeth knocked out. They out here having sex. They body, they just wear their body down. Reverend Thomas look younger than some of these teenagers. They don't have to eat right. They outside, it's below zero, no head on. They got these, these Uchi jackets on that don't cover their rear end. They don't have on all the clothes they need. They're not eating right. They're not sleeping right. Then you got these women out here that's just grandmas looking like a fool. Ain't got nothing covered up. Baby, don't you know when sometimes your bones get cold? You need to be in the house with your pajamas on. But when the Lord calls you a whore, because you done mistreated him, pimp put you out, pimp will go down there and shoot people because you're his property, see? In the natural, you're his property. You're going to go out there and make that money. You're going to bring the money back to him. What's the benefit for you? What you get out the deal? Nothing. It's the same way the devil uses you. He used you. He used your youth. He used your mind. 
He steal you of your youth. He steal your memory. He steal your health. He steal your common sense. And then when he's done with you, and then here you come crawling to God, and all he can use is what's left, if it's anything that he can use. I remember when my sister Melinda, she got killed so many years ago, and we were there in the hospital. And she was on drugs, she was doing all kind of stuff, and somebody killed her. So there we are in a hospital, and these people come back, I forget their names, uh, the donor. And she had abused her body so much, they said that the only thing they could use were maybe some veins, some little small things, but no organs. That was infected with drugs. She had two lungs, couldn't use them. Had two kidneys, couldn't use those. Had a liver, couldn't use that. Had a heart, couldn't use that. And what I understand, what I understand from the medical field, you can correct me if I'm wrong, low is that brain, the body, the heart is still going, those organs are still vital. If the heart stops, they only got so much time to get the organs out to use for somebody else. Right. But her stuff was messed up from the flow up because of drugs and the way she lived her life. It was nothing left that could be salvaged or used to help give life to somebody else. Like the devil does you. Uses up your mind, uses up your intellect, convinces you to you. He just pimping you every day. And then when you come to God, it's so unjust for him. It's so unjust for you to realize you owe him 10%. But you, 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 you give your money to the devil. Oh, yes, you did. You stayed out all night. When that bar shut down, you wouldn't have found another bar. You got your clothes ready for the party during the week. You ain't paid your light bill, but you had that Uchi Mama outfit. Now you got arthritis. You can't get up. You got to get up at least three hours before you got to leave out. Because your bones got the, the ankle bone got the, your arm bone got the, <laughs> your leg bone got the. You got to get all that working. You got to get your teeth in, get your hair on. Maybe your knee on, maybe your foot on, I don't know. <laughs> but when the Lord tried to get you when you was young and vital, he was a whore. And so now all he got is just a little part of your life. Not to say people who got arthritis or sick and got different. It's godly people that's inflicted with stuff. That's not what I'm saying, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Now you ain't got nothing left. You can't move fast. Can't move your arm too fast. You got to write everything down. Now I think I'll serve the Lord now. Shame on you. Shame on you when the Lord calls you a whore. And he talks about it in Ezekiel, the 16th chapter. He also talks about it in Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter, when the Lord calls you a whore. But I want to bring to you a very prominent whore that's very, very prominent in, our, in this day and time that we now live in, and you'll find her history in Revelation, the 20th chapter, when the Lord calls you a whore. Revelation, the 18th chapter, we find there's the fall of Babylon. Now, what is Babylon? It's the big whore. It's the woman whore that represents what? It represents the world church. When the Lord calls you a whore. The destruction of the world church. The great whore that's mentioned in the book of Revelation. What is Babylon? It's the big whore. It's the woman whore that's represented in the what? The world church. The world church is really something else. And the fall of the world church is going to happen in the tribulation period. And what a fall is going to be. And the Lord has called her the big whore. She has committed fornication. She has committed adultery. She has committed all kinds of sins. And God hates her. God despises the world church. And there are more people in the world church that you would, than you would ever find in the true, the true church of Jesus Christ. You got to really be born again to be in a Jesus Christ church. 
And you can't be born again unless you go through the door of the ark, which is Christ Jesus. You have to go through the word, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and that ark is available to everybody. And if you are not free from all sin, then you are not in Christ Jesus. It don't matter if you commit one sin, if you tell a lie, if you steal, if you smoked a blunt yesterday, if you fornicated, if you shacked up with somebody that ain't your uh, companion, if you married to somebody and you looking across the street at somebody else, if you smoke cigarettes, if you are uh, addicted to the lottery, if you gamble, you are not saved. Come on, You curse. How in the world can you belong to God with curse words? Curse words, blaspheme in the name of the Lord. Peter lost salvation in Matthew 26 and 27 because he cursed. He denied the Lord. Ain't no such thing as no cursing Christian. Ain't no such thing as going down in the basement and smoking. What kind of mess is this? He said, come out from among them in Corinthians. And Corinthians, and be you separated, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive it. I'll be your daddy. I'll be your mama. I'll be your father. I'll be your sister. I'll be your brother. She dresses a certain way, very provocative, or a man. That's right. Because some of these men, their pants be so tight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to show off what they think they got. We had a brother come here. <laughs> we had a brother come here. His pants were so tight. I just, I just think to myself, it just made me uncomfortable to observe that. You know, I, <laughs> like I really want them to do a study of what happens when kids wear their pants down for all these years. Because you know, they, they make their legs go like this. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, it, it, it ain't really been a study done now, but like when you get older, do you get arthritis? your joints, what happened? Because you were not made to walk like that. Yeah. And yet you got babies born who have to walk like that and they got to break their legs and set them right. right. So I'm curious right. about what's going to happen right. to you when it's all said and done. That's right. I'm curious. I'm curious. I, I want to know, I want somebody to do a study on that. That 10 years, 15 years of walking around like a fool, I want to know what happens. Do you then get arthritis in your hips? Do your legs, do you take the form like that? What happens? Because this baby's born, their legs not straight. Unless I'm wrong, they got to break them and set them right. But here you are purposely deforming yourself. Something is wrong somewhere. Maybe it's me. Right? But here, huh? It's real quiet here, neighbor. Let me, can I? Right. It says she has committed fornication, adultery, she has committed all kinds of sins. You got to be really born again to be in the church of Jesus Christ. If you're not living free from all sin, you are not saved. You are Jesus Christ is not your Savior. No matter what anyone might, no matter what anyone might tell you, and there's such deceit in the churches today, it's such deceit in the ministers and the priests alike. It is terrible. They tell people that nobody can live free from sin. They tell people that it is impossible to live free from sin. Well, if that's true, then it won't be nobody in heaven. But there are people up in heaven because the Bible teaches us not to sorrow for those who are left. Don't act as if we don't have no hope because Jesus said that when he came back, he's going to bring our loved ones with him. Those who died in the Lord. He said they are coming back. And 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, write it down. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except what? There come a falling away first. And a man of sin be revealed, who is what? The son of perdition. And it's such a falling away in this final hour. It's not just the churches that have fought the Holy Ghost for years, but it's Pentecostal denominations. They are not anything like they used to be. They're elders. They have gone away. Those who preach the old time power. I remember when I was coming up and I came up in the Baptist church, I remember, oh my Lord and oh my God, on that day we had communion, everybody was quiet, it was so holy, and no, we didn't really play the organ that much, but we put our hands together and stumped our feet, and we talked about being, uh, take me to the water, I want to be redeemed. We started singing those old hymns about how you've been to Calvary, but my Lord and my God, there's so many churches, they have ripped their altars out of the 
the church. They try to take people in the back room to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Why do they do that, Reverend Thomas? Because they don't have anything. I want people to be out in the open. I want them to see when the power of God is reigning. I want them to be out in the open. I want the power of God to be manifested. I want people to see Jesus in action. Reverend Thomas, why is that? Because in 1 Corinthians, I believe it's the 14th chapter, he said, the, oh my God, the unbelievers might come in. They might not really realize what's going on. But when prophecy comes forth, it will reveal the secrets that's in the hearts of people. I mean real God prophecy. Not this speaking of prophecy at will. But God will reveal himself. He will reveal himself to a man. He will reveal himself to a woman. And that person may be sitting all the way in the back. They'll know that's my life on stage. That's me. God is here for sure. Yeah. Diseases ain't even been known. 
and some of these diseases make you sterile. You'll be surprised how many people you know got AIDS. You'll be surprised how many people you know got STDs. I hear the young kids talking about him right here in the restaurant. You know, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so got chlamydia. So what he telling his friend? Forget about her. Go with somebody else. When God calls you a whore, go with me to Matthew, the seventh chapter. When God calls you a whore. And then we go going to Revelation. Matthew 7, 13 through 15 says, each enter ye in at the straight, straight gate, but they don't want that. People say they want the truth, but they don't want the truth. They don't want nothing that ruffles their feathers. They don't want nothing that's going to shine a light on their sin. That's why they're a whore. When God calls you a whore. And some of these men, you got to think about this in a literal sense. Some of these women out here prostituting themselves, these men don't care. They do all kind of dogmatic stuff to them. Step on them, kick them. Fight them, and it's supposed to all be a, a part of their uh, their experience. What kind of mess? But just like the devil, the woman allows it. She knows she got to have that money for her pimp. You let the devil deceive you into thinking that you're going to heaven and you tell lies? He pimping you. You let the devil deceive you into thinking that, oh, my Lord, everybody sleeps around? He's deceiving you. He's pimping you. You let the devil deceive you? that you can speak in tongues at will, he's deceiving you, he's pimping you. Stop being this whore. Get your stuff and go home. That's what the prodigal son said. I know what I'm doing, I'm eating, feeding the swine. And in my house, in my father's house, he got servants. But when God calls you a whore, that's something else. Ezekiel, the eighth chapter, he says, Did go real and go in deep. He said, I'm going to surface. He said, to Go right in deep and see the abominations that's happening in my house. In my house, called by my name. People whore hopping right in the house of God. When God calls you a whore. Matthew 7, 13 through 15 says, Enter in at the straight gate. They don't want that. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, few that be that find it. Now, you know, when I really first got the knowledge of what this meant, I was like, what you mean? It ain't that many people saved, relatively speaking. Because the world, the world church, the great Lord, the book of Revelation endorses, no matter what you do, you can still go to heaven. All religions going to be accepted in heaven. But as I study the word of God, I don't see no religion that Jesus endorsed. I don't see it wasn't Episcopalian, it wasn't Pentecostal, it wasn't Afro-American, it wasn't Catholicism, it wasn't the Baptist, it wasn't the Lutheran, it was holiness or hell. Mm -hmm. Denominations are man-made. Yes, I, I don't see it in the world. Yes. This religion got mad with that religion, so they pull people out and start their own thing. Right. Come on, y'all. That's right. That's right. Write me, call me, whatever. It's right. It says, which leads to that be that find it. Beware of what? False prophets, the pimps. There they go. The Lord Reverend Thomas. The false prophets, they pimps. John, I believe, is the 10th chapter. He said, they don't care about you. They send you out there. And when they see the wolf come, they see the evil come, they run and leave you stranded. Amen. Sound like a pimp, don't it? Siren going on. You over there in the car with your John. And they didn't beat you so bad, they already told you when you go down to the jail, you better not tell them my name. Because I'm going to beat you even worse. That's just the way the devil is. Beat you up, beat your marriage all up, beat your kids all up, beat your job all up, beat your man all up, beat your health all up. And you better not tell them, you better not tell nobody what's going on. He is your pimp. You do what he say when he tell you to do it. Start confusion in the church. He pimping you. Then you won't sit at home in your, in your room with the light out. You fool. The Bible said, Jesus said, I didn't write. Jesus said, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the what? But you're in the dark. Now what you're doing is you think you're walking in the light, but you're in the night. Anything.
believe when God is God. I want people to receive the Holy Ghost right out here in the front. I want unbelievers to see the true and the real baptism in the Holy Ghost. I want them to see the miracles of God manifested because some pimps out there then deceive people and made them think they got something that they don't get. But I heard the Lord say through Moses, the Lord will show you tomorrow who are his. He said, I'm, he going to show you tomorrow. You think, you think, Cora, you think this is a light thing that the Lord has told you to be his minister, to minister before him? Oh, oh, oh. And Moses and Aaron got afraid. Said, but on tomorrow, we gonna, it's going to all be cleared up. That's right. On tomorrow, we all going to find out. And that doctor over there in the book of Acts, he heard Moses saying that stuff. He heard Moses saying that stuff to Cora and them. He said, oh, 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 oh. If it ain't of God, don't worry about it. He said, but if they really are God, we're going to be in trouble. Back up. When the Lord calls you a whore. Desperate. Money. Selling herself for money. Sleeping around with different people don't even know. How in the world can you give yourself to somebody that you don't even love? Intimacy, that's the most intimate part of yourself. And that's the reason why the Lord made intimacy and marriage. He wanted, he, that's the making love is the glue that puts the marriage, that holds the marriage together. That's when you show yourself to your companion in a way that don't nobody else know about. Not in our day. Ain't nothing holy, ain't nothing sacred. You ain't got to wait and I wonder about the uh, girl when you get married. She's showing it to you across the, the lunchroom counter in the high school. Right. Having oral sex. Come on, somebody. Sex upstairs or downstairs is still wrong. Right? And I'm going to keep on going. You can hear a pin drop later in this congregation right now. Right. Revelation 18, starting at verse number one, when the Lord calls you a whore. Once he gets you knocked up, he going on to the next, the next victim. And here you are, you outstretched. Here you are with the baby. He going on. He going on. To, he going on to the next person. Ain't even thinking about you. You want to be loved. You want to have a baby so you can have somebody to love. Jump and start loving yourself. Start by loving yourself. Why you want to bring a baby into this world and you don't even know who you are? Why you want to bring a baby in this world and you don't even love yourself? Then when you all spoiled, now you all sorry. Now you're so just so sorry. Now but the baby is here. You got that, you got that burden for 18 years. God forbid you have a sickly baby. That's your, that's your cross to carry for 18 years. What he had. Now you got to go through. Now you got, what is it, baby daddy drama? It's cute when you're young, but see, you grow up. You get older. That's right. They move off, go someplace else. You still with that baby. You can't put that baby in a corner over there. I'll be back. Mm -mm. But see, he gone. He, he gone to the next day. He didn't pimp you. Now he ain't going on across town. And now you and the other baby mama, y'all butting heads fighting. Y'all shouldn't be knocking his head out. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How? Fred Hammond said, boom! <laughs> Fred Hammond said, boom! And you sitting there rock. <laughs> Who that with you? Your mama and your father. Now they raising you and your child. Tell him, tell him. He gone, he free. But you loved him. First one, Revelation 18. Maybe you having a good time with me today. I'm having a good time with you. Yeah. Revelation 18, verse 1 said, After these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. 
and he cried mightily. Think about this. He would cry with such a voice that it would be heard throughout the whole earth. With a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen. Is fallen. And you think about the Lord emphasizes. Now you've got to realize that the book of Revelation was dictated to John the Beloved on the album of Patmos. He actually dictated these letters to John. And when you see something in red, you know that Jesus spoke it. So he says, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. So when the Lord says something twice, when he tells you something twice, that same thing over, what he said is drastic. And it's become the habitation of devils. That's the world church. Ain't no God in it. Yeah, man made poor people. Ain't no God in it. It's a man-made pulpit. Them deacons put you in. When they get mad, you start talking about hell. Maybe you don't let their wife sing. They vote you out. You ain't preaching the way they want you to preach. They get the board and slip you a little note. Your lock be changed. They lock you out of the church. Gotta be careful what you're getting into, but in the world church is a man-made church, God's not in it. They might have God on the outside, they might play the organ, they might even open up this Bible, but it ain't no God in it. God is not in anything that's not holy, that's not righteous, that's not pure, and that's not clean. Come on, that's right. Come on now. You're not living free from sin, it's not a church of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died and gave his blood so we could live free from sin. Mm -hmm. I heard the scripture said that before Jesus died, he used to wink at their ignorance, but he said, since they beat me to death, they pierced me in my side, they placed that crown of thorn upon my head, he said when that blood came out, I drew the line, everybody got to live holy. Mm -hmm. mm. That's what he said. I don't know what you're talking about, Reverend Thomas, but you need to read John, around the 11th chapter, said Nicodemus was a ruler, said he snuck out by night to ask the same question that I just gave you the answer for. He said, I'm a master. How is it? How is it? How is it possible that I could be born again? Now think about this. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews, but he was lost about salvation, just like so many people that's in the church. Once you start talking to them about really living free from sin, they start scratching their head and breaking out. They talking about sin. What you sin? What you mean? Bishops, pastors, evangelists. And the list goes on. You start talking to them about living free from sin. You start talking to them about a born again experience. You lose them. They have no idea what you're talking about. Why? Because they exist in a man made church and God is not in it. But those churches are going to be right down here. It's right here. We're reading about them right now. The biggest whore is the world church. It's right here. The whore that's mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, is the world church. When God calls you a whore. It's right here. Right? It's become the habitation of devils. Now that's the world church. There's no God in it. It's devil possession. So many people are devil possessed today. And the whole of the evil, foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now that means that all kind of demonic devils, all kind of devils, the worst kind, many have been turned loose on the face of the earth right now. And there will be more turned loose in our studies, we know, in the tribulation period. Some of the worst ones have been kept in chains all these thousands of years, and they're going to be set free for a period of time toward the close of the tribulation period, the later half of it. Right. Verse 3 says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. People Come to church, it's the end thing. It's the end thing. They all take on the same spirit with her. What is it, Reverend Thomas? It's the spirit of Jezebel. That's the spirit of the world church. It's the spirit of Jezebel. And you can read about Jezebel. You can read about her. I believe it is in 1 Kings, the 21st chapter. That's the spirit that's in the world church. False prophecies, controlling spirit, taking stuff from people, making false promises, having people believe that God ain't great, having people believe that God ain't going to send nobody to hell. That's true. God don't send nobody to hell. Your filthiness, your whoring, your abominations, your fornication, your adultery sends you to hell. No, God don't do it. But he's calling you a whore right here. He's calling you a whore right here. Right here. Right here in his own word. Right? 
He says again in verse 3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Right? She's so delicate in action. But you get awful death. Verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not her plagues. Now, the plagues are rained down upon her, which is what? The world church. God hates that spirit of lukewarmness. In Revelation 3, 16, you can write it down and stay right here with me. It says, So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spoo thee out of my mouth. It makes him sick. And he said he will vomit them out of his mouth into the tribulation period. And you've got to think about this, that sinners are not in the mouth of God. He is talking about Christians. Christians who are walking afar off. And you can back that up with Matthew 26 chapter when it talks about Peter walked afar off. Peter failed God because he cursed. He failed God because he denied the Lord. When those people came up to him and said, weren't you with the Lord? He said, no, I was not. And the Lord said that if you deny me in James 4 and 4, he said, when I see you or when I, I will deny you before my Father and the angels who are in heaven. He said, you deny me before this perverse and wicked generation, if I'm not mistaken, James 4 and 4, I will deny you before my Father and the angels which are in heaven, which means you ain't getting any. Right? Yeah. Verse number 5, it said, for her sins have reached into heaven. Not that the sins got into heaven, but that just the noise of it has reached the throne of God. Think about that. God sees everything you do. He hears everything you say. He knows every thought. He knows every intent in your heart. And God has remembered her iniquities. And he's cutting her off. The great whore and all of those that have her spirit, she carries 100% the spirit of Jezebel. And you need to study up on Jezebel. The Lord had predicted that the dogs would eat her flesh. She brought Baal worship in. She caused Ahab and his whole household to be slain. He had 70 sons, and they were all killed, every single one of them. And the world church is causing people to go to hell. The world church is the big pimp in this final hour. The world church, a church that will not stand up for the truth, a church that convinces people that no matter what you do, that heaven is still yours, a church that preaches, oh my Lord and oh my God, that even though you marry to somebody, except you get... Uh, you are free according to the word of God. You can just divorce that person and get another person. That's a pimp church. Oh, my Lord, the world church is pimping God's people in the spine world. It's not making them rise up. It's not making them rise up and be the people that God commanded them to be in the spine world. Oh, my God, false prophets, false doctrine. They are pimping God's people, and we just keep on paying for it. We just keep on paying for it with our finances. We keep on paying for what I serve to. We keep on paying for what I loyalty. We know the stuff that we are hearing. Some of you guys hearing across the pulpit, you know it's not right. You know your pastor smoke. You know your pastor drinks. You know your pastor's not giving you the word of God. But you love it. You just want to be in the in crowd. You want to be accepted. And oh my Lord and oh my God, if you know anything about the Antichrist, if you know anything about the Antichrist, the power that he's going to hold when he comes on the scene, you are going to have to bow. That power is going to be so strong that he's going to carry when Neighbor, let me tell you, the spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist is in the world today, and it's being used by these pastors who preach false doctrine. They are pimping you, and that power is so strong. It's so seducing. It's so intoxicating oh, that when it gets inside of you, oh, my God, and now you are deceived. You are so deceivable, and you're just thinking this final hour, oh, my God, just think about it. Isaiah 6, chapter, verse number 1, said the people was going to be in gross darkness. What was that darkness that Isaiah was talking about? He was talking about false doctrine. He was was talking about people behind a pulpit of God. They say one thing, but they tell you something else. They tell you to do this, but then they do something else. Oh, my Lord and oh, my God. I believe it's in the book of Matthew. He says some of these evangelists, they travel all across the sea. He said they travel all over the whole wide world. And what do they do? They recruit people, but it's with false doctrine because that's all they have. Think about the millions of people today that's contaminated with this field. They don't even know anything about the true and the living God. They're just children in their faith. Yes. They're just children in what they believe. Yes. And a person comes with a Bible and they believe what they say. They come speaking some scriptures. Yeah. 
And maybe the poor person don't even know anything about living free from sin. Most of the people who are walking, who are walking afar from the Lord, they were taught to walk afar from the Lord. Most of the people who believe that nobody can live free from sin, they were taught it from the poor pits of these churches. Oh my Lord and oh my God, false doctrine. They are pimps. They are pimping, they are pimping God's people. And all they do, they are taking your eternal life. They are stealing you of your eternal life. They are stealing from you the miracles you can have in this final hour. They are stealing your youth for the Lord promised to keep you in your youth. He promised that you would have a good memory. It said that when Moses went up there to die, it said that he wasn't sick. And it said that he had a strong man. And he said, as a matter of fact, it's so that people wouldn't fight over his body. He said he sent some angels up there to bury his body. Oh, my Lord and oh, my God. But it said that he was strong. He died around 125 years old. He wasn't weak. He wasn't feeble. And he wasn't bent over. But when false doctrine is preached to you, then what do you have? What do you have to draw on? What to keep you strong? What to keep you healthy? What to give you miracles? What to give you healing? It's the truth, neighbor. It's the truth that's in God's word. Jesus is coming. God bless you. I'll see you next time.